Great, Brandon. How are you doing? Doing outstanding. Pleasure to have you back in. And uh, we did this a couple of weeks ago, and we'll take the pulse of your team. And I know that you took a, a recent road trip stretching across, you know, five cities, and you were looking for a couple of different things. What did you come across with? What did you see on the road trip that you just took? Well, I think it was on that road trip that uh, Tony Douglas started playing really well and, you know, kind of fulfilled what we thought he could be. Uh, and, and, you know, it's continued that. Um, you know, watching Tracy McGrady to kind of judge where he is. Uh, Billy Walker, J.R. Giddens, you know, we're trying to see kind of could they fit into our plans next year. Um, and uh, then the rest of our players, just, you know, seeing them kind of come together on that road trip, uh, which is gratifying because we know we're in the end of the season. We know that we don't have a great chance to make the playoffs. So it's pride now and guys that want to play together, and I enjoyed seeing that. Well, Donnie, you know this as well as I, being you know in the personnel business for as long as you have. It's very tough to evaluate a player at this point in the season. Not everybody brings it every night. Some teams that are set up for the postseason take a night off. It's the NBA. It happens. So with that in mind, I mean, how much can you truly take away, specifically Tony Douglas, uh, how, how real uh, and how legit has he been, you know, what, what we've seen so far? I take it that he's real, real, mm -hmm. because he started against Dallas, and one thing you also get at this time of the year is the teams that are going in the playoffs are dead serious. They're playing every minute to try to get better so that when they go in the playoffs, they're ready. So when you see guys performing against playoff teams, that's a big difference than you know, a team that might be in our situation and comes in and does has a bad game because they're not into it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what's completely different. It's president of the Knicks. That's Donnie Walsh, Brandon Tierney show. Donnie, how about this? Uh, who who knows? And it's it's you know as, as we all as we all theorize on all, all the teams and certainly with the Knicks, there there's been a lot of that the past couple of years. But is it unfair to say that if Tony Douglas took the basketball? two months ago, away from, you know, first Duhon and then Rodriguez, that the Knicks might be a postseason team. No, I don't think you can say that at all. I think that what misunderstood a lot, you know, um, out there about um, rookies when they come in is they need development. And you can't say that Tony D uh, Douglas was ready to play the minute he walked in here. Uh, he was making a transition to point guard from shooting guard, which I think a, a lot of great point guards come from college as shooting guards and then become point guards in the pros. And a good example would be Chauncey Billups. Mm -hmm. It took him a while before people thought he would be a good point guard. Um, he was traded. He was, you know, from one franchise to another. People were saying he couldn't play point guard. And then he got to Detroit, and he became a great point guard, maybe as good as we have in the league. Mm -hmm. And there's just a different development stages for uh, rookies. And so I think it's unfair to say, well, in the beginning of the year, we would have won a lot more games. You know, I don't think you can make that judgment. But the one thing it shows is that Tony Douglas, when he sat on the bench, was learning. And going into practice, he was learning how to bring uh, to bring forward his point guard skills and the technique that you had to use in the NBA, which is totally different from college. Mm -hmm. Where did you think, Donnie, at this point, and I don't even know, we look at it so differently, maybe you don't even let your mind wander, but going into training camp and, you know, all the different moving parts, what, what was your realistic expectation for this season? Well, I was nervous about this year because during the summer, I wasn't in a position to improve the team as much as maybe I you know, would in other years. Um, because all we could take back would be, if in a trade, would be a one-year contract. All we could sign a player for was for this year. And so, you, don't, you know, you limit what you can go out there and get. And so you're taking um, players that have to be developed, players that are, you know, willing to take that kind of a contract because they haven't, you know, they haven't got an offer somewhere else. Um, so I knew that it wasn't, it wasn't going to be an easy year. Now we went into training camp. Like every other team in the league, you're optimistic, and you, your goal is always to make the playoffs. And so, you know, that's just the way I've approached it every year. But this year, I knew it would be a difficult year. I think I said it the first day I was here. Mm -hmm. You did. You said, and you said you were going to shave away the money, and you were going to be patient. And uh, Donnie, I don't know how the heck you did it in this city, but somehow, man, you've remained patient. Now, I don't think that's as easy as some people think. Well, you know, I, I do think it had to be done. Um, whether it was by me or whoever, uh, 
that there just had to be a point we just said, okay, you know, we're not going to just go sideways. We're going to try to see if we can get this team in a position mm -hmm. where it can be improved to become a contender. Uh, and so, and I knew that it would be difficult because that means you had to take two years and do the best you could. I wanted to be competitive. I think within games we've been competitive, but I don't know that we've been competitive for the playoffs. And th that's my goal every year is to be competitive for the playoffs. So, you know, I didn't like myself most of the time. That's Donnie Walsh, president of the Knicks, Brandon Tierney Show. Hey, you know, to be fair, Donnie, I don't know if somebody else would have been able to do this, not from not from showing the, the, the personal restraint, but by getting the, the room uh, to do this from the fans. I think because of your history, uh, and as respected as you've been for decades around the NBA by many people, I think when you say the name Donnie Walsh, people trusted more than other names, and, and that's afforded you the opportunity of, of, of buying into time and, and, and really not doing anything rash. Do you think that makes sense? Well, I, I, I was shocked um, to see that there were a lot of fans, not every fan, but a lot of fans in New York who seemed to get it, what I was doing, because almost in every other uh, uh, marketplace, people don't understand the capital. Don't, when you say, well, I'm going to try to get under, they, I don't want to hear that, you know, call me when you, when you get under. Uh, but here, not only do they seem to understand it, but they supported us the whole year. And when we're playing good, the, the, the fans are totally uh, behind us during the games. And, and I didn't expect that. Uh, so I'd say it's easier to do it in New York after my experience here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the reason I was willing to do it is because I'm coming toward the end of my career. If I was in the middle of my career, I'd have been a lot more nervous. Ah, come on. You're still a young guy, Donnie. Don't, don't be saying that. But I still, this is, this is my swan song, and I want it to be a great swan song because I grew up here, and I want to see New York go back into championship contention. Uh, and, and we know you mean that. Well said. Stoney Wallace, president of the Knicks, Brandon Tierney Show. All right, so the objective this summer is to bring in a whole host of talent. I'm not going to put you in the spot of naming names. I know you can't do that. That's tampering. I'm not going to put you in that spot. But in, in terms of the organizational blueprint for the, for the um, I guess, the way you attack this summer, if you don't get two max contracts, how disappointed will you be? Well, I wouldn't say it's just, uh, look, whenever you get into any one thing, you try to go after the best thing you can do. I'd be disappointed in that sense. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to, you know, full tent. I mean, I think that we can still continue to make the team better, and then we'll look to the next year. But I, I want to make the team better this year, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to overpay and take our, uh, up our room for players that I think don't deserve that. I would agree with that, and I think that that's a sound philosophy. I wonder, Donnie, are you willing and, and able to stretch this out into the summer of 2011? Let's face it, not name it names, but there's a big guy who's available who you recently played against, and Gallo played very well, by the way, against this guy, uh, who, could be, who could be available in 2011. Would you stretch it over two summers and not just one? Well, I think I've got to make that decision, you know, when I get there. But I'm just giving you a kind of a philosophically, mm -hmm. I don't want to put us back in the same position. No, you can't do that. You can't do that to New York City ever again, Donnie. That can't happen here. Yeah, I think that <laughs> from here on out, it's going to be cap management for every team in the league. Mm -hmm. And we got to become part of that. In other words, we've got to approach things that way. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, before we get to Gallo, do you think McGrady still has something left, and, and I mean something where he can actually help a team win a lot of games, important games. Maybe not in the role he used to have, uh, and I wouldn't judge him right now because I knew when he came in here it was going to take him time to get his body back to where you know he was a, a big-time player. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think that he can be part of a solution. I really do uh, because he's you know one of these guys that – you know, when he does, has a game where we haven't had a, a game the night before and he's, he's rested, you know, basically he does things so easy, even though his athleticism isn't where it used to be, mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, I think he can be part of a, a, of a very good team. And he wants to be, so, you know, I, I do. I think he can, you know, maybe he can't be the...